DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. It's time for another exciting episode of MJ Does the Mix Show. That's right. You've been waiting for it all week, and you pulled out your Mega Seg. You were all warmed up and ready to go, and then you realized Mega Seg can't mix. It can to a point, but not in the way that we're going to be talking about tonight. Not so much. Not so much. It has its place. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is quite an elaborate program. I mean... I mean, how many years has it been out? Ten years more. Oh, more goodness than... gracious. It, it it had started before we started, so it, probably closer to 20 now is what. Okay. Wow. That's cool. They they were one of the early ones then, yeah. Yeah, very much so in the Macintosh world. But as as you say, they started and made it kind of like an automation system mm -hmm. for college radio stations, that type of a thing. Right. I'd love right. to talk to Jason. Unfortunately, he's too busy to, uh, to take. But it would be interesting to hear how or why he started and why he developed it. You know, I, I think there, there's a lot of similarities between how Jason started his business and how Troy started his. They were DJs, right. and they like, you know, I should just code it, and make it myself. <laughs> and then, you next, you know, yeah, the necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, and off they off they went. So, but now everybody's adding that kind of stuff. Oh, for sure, it's amazing how many. And you guys don't get to see the emails we get from companies who have startup software and say, "Hey, can you check out and do a review on our software?" No. No, I some don't. is all right. Some is not. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's not so much the the quality of the software. Don't get me wrong. There, it's just the amount of time it takes to learn the software, so you can actually talk somewhat intelligently about it. Yeah, well, that I guess more time wouldn't help me talk intelligently about it. But but some people <laughs> know what the heck they're talking. Every about. little bit helps, right? Exactly. Okay, so we are broadcasting out to Facebook and YouTube tonight. We're going to be following the YouTube chat the most because Facebook just does not flow on my computer for some reason. I'll, I'll figure that out someday, but I don't know why. I do not know why. I'm not going to follow anything. I'm going to let you take okay, charge. Okay, then, then, you, then you can just be that way. So this is our, our first show tonight, and this one is the YouTube-friendly version of our show that we're going to be doing. Then there's going to be an after-hours show. We've got our 9 o'clock show we're doing right now, and then there will be a 10 o'clock. Um, Jeremy Breck and Dave Turney are going to be talking weddings. They're going to be talking about uh, Jeremy's experience at NAM with lighting. And if you guys didn't hear much about that, they're going to cover a lot of what uh, Jeremy did down there. He's so busy. I, I think I saw him for like two seconds. That was about it. Then after that, MJ is going to be doing kind of an after-hours party tonight type of a situation where he's got the system all set up. He's got the decks uh, hooked up. And there's going to be some other folks out there that could have their controllers and such hooked up too. And it's basically going to be a night to talk about trip tricks and tips and mixing and what have you. Now, that particular show is going to be playing music and it can't be on YouTube. So what we're doing with that one is if you have signed up at the DJNTVInsider.com, if you go out there, if you've signed up even for the keep up to date, when I get done with this show, I'm going to email uh, the link out to everyone so they can go to that Zoom because it's just going to be on Zoom later tonight. If you are an insider, it's also going to be, it's already posted in the uh, Facebook user group. So you can go there if you are a paid um, insider member. Otherwise, watch for that email that will be coming to you about, oh, I would say probably about, what, 1030 Eastern time, somewhere in that ballpark. It will be going out. And again, if you wanted to get signed up, if you're not already there to, on that email list, go out to DJNTVInsider.com and just 
click on the keep up to date link that will get you the link and if you feel so generous as to be part of the supporting team of uh, the different shows there's more options there okay i think we have our house cleaning done yes cool i think we're ready awesome so what do you uh, have when, for us tonight? By the way, when, by the way, when are we going to hear all your Nam stories? I gonna, did you guys take share any of them yet? I I've I've talked a little bit, but I've really been saving some of the things that couldn't be shared. I've 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 saved quite a few of the uh, the pictures. I haven't talked to any of the pictures. I have some video things that I I shot that haven't been seen. So I, I I'm hoping that next Monday that uh, we'll be able to squeeze that squeeze those things in. Because there, there was a couple of things, one of which was a line array that can do incredible things, things you, I wouldn't have, you wouldn't see a speaker system doing. Right. So that'll be next. Technology is awesome. It is. It really is. I, I, I really like, the, I mean, because as, as someone as old as I am, I have people all the time that, that are amazed how into the technology I am. And, and I, all I can say is that it make, kind of makes sense to me. Um, I've never taken a computer class in my entire life. Um, it just has always made sense to me. And, mm -hmm. and I guess that's a benefit. Everybody has their pros and cons. I mean, you know, you know their strong points, weak points, and that's always been mine. And now that we get into this age of DJing that we are and, and cell phones and programs and apps and all this stuff, um, I, I'm, I'm having a blast. I like seeing the stuff, even yeah. though I may never use some of the stuff. It's nice to see it. I mean, I just have fun. I was just telling John before the show that I've been hearing so many positive uh, reports in people's videos on the new mark ns62 that i want to get a hold of one um because everybody's saying good things about it so i mean i tested it at the expo but i want to kind of like really throw down on it and kind of see because like i'm saying i mean all i'm hearing lots of good stuff about it so and the, and the part that you know i've got the 7000 as we both both know of course the part that i i'm liking with this and I, cause I haven't taken this mobile because i don't want to go i don't have a case for it yet so it's basically i move my laptop over and i've been playing with it here I like the touch capacitive knobs. Knobs. And I'm really, 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 really liking that a lot. I mean, crazy amounts a lot because you can hit that and it just kills it. Yeah. So if I want to take the bass out, I just hit it. I don't have to be turning it down because I, I don't have the the quick wrist action like Shaney does for turning the knobs down. Yeah, I'm, 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 you know, old arthritic, you know, may have to push the arm over. So just reaching over there and just kind of, it works for me. Turn in touch. Turn in touch. I just go to. I, I did see that you you got a case for the DJ to go to. I did this. I was like, what? This a is a case for that, which it makes sense because there's no nothing for it. This so just, they have a case for it. Well, no, they don't. I found one at Nam. Okay. That was that was one of the things I was looking for. Was something that put the DJ to go to in, and Magma cases had had the nice little nice little guy there. So. I was so excited to find it because now I can go in my backpack and it can, it's not going to worry crushed. about damaging that. Yeah. 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 So I'm really That's excited awesome. about how, that. I guess I was going to ask you how much. 30, but... $36. The link, if you guys go to the YouTube channel, uh, the video's there. There's a link down below. And yes, that's an affiliate link that's, um, that it doesn't cost you guys anything more to buy it from that link, but it, we get a little bit of love from Amazon. And what's yeah. really kind of cool about that, I was just going to just throw this out there, is that because of us, our affiliate link being used a lot for a lot of DJ gear, they Amazon starts connecting DJ some different the different companies that sell DJ gear to us, and then gear gets sent out for reviews and different things, which is which is kind of cool because some of that gear is going to be given away at um, Midwest DJs Live. We're going to be taking some of that up there oh, cool. and giving it away. So it's kind of a a neat little benefit there because you know they send out two of something. Well, right. I, I would want ten of them. You know that kind of a thing. Ah! So, <laughs> and it's you know it's fine but yeah <sighs> i'm just howie, hearing things my yeah. father said to me when i was younger so yeah howie I've, I, on the youtube channel it's it's there i don't know if i can grab it quick here i'll uh i'll see if i can grab it uh while, while mj is doing his his okay. things tonight so yeah all right so tonight we're going to talk about mixing now the reason i, I wanted to talk about this is because there is such a great divide between the DJs who DJ like in clubs and bars and festivals and the DJs who do mobile gigs, weddings, bar mitzvahs, etc. cetera. Yep. And they really don't know each other's world. It's funny. I'm standing in the middle and I can look to one side and talk about Megaseg and have them go, what is that? I've never yep. heard of that. And then I go to the other side and talk about, you know, like, a, you know, Serato SL box. And they're like, I don't know what an no, SL yep. box is. So it's, it's kind of, I kind of want to try to, 
this show is kind of for someone who's interested in getting those other gigs. Where do you start? What do you need to try if you if you are interested? Because I like being able to do it because let's say that you have a good wedding business mm -hmm. and you want to then in your off season make some extra money. Uh, having the mixing skills, you can go and get these other jobs that that I'm going to describe that you that absolutely 100% require you to be able to mix. So that's part of it. Um, that tonight we're going to talk about how to get started at that. If you're interested, equipment that will be needed, expected of you, depending on which area you want to go, whether it be a bar, a festival, different things like that. We're going to kind of cover it all. Um, the different venues that is required. And, and I say this because I do a lot. I, I'm DJing at minimum once a week, if not three or four times a week, depending. I have three this week. And I think I have three next week. And probably... 80 to 90% of all the gigs I do throughout the year. So we're talking multiple gigs a week throughout the year. I got, I, if I wasn't able to mix, I could not do them. They sure. would not hire me. It's as flat as that. They just don't, they absolutely, whether the crowd thinks it's important or not, the people who hire think it's important. Mm -hmm. that, that's where I'm looking at it from. If you want in on these, uh, the people who are hiring you are going to be looking for that. Um, so we're going to talk obviously about clubs. Everybody knows, you know, we've all been to a club at some point and seen a DJ mixing. Um, some bars are that way to where you can go two different ways with a bar. I always tell people uh, real estate when it comes to places. So if most of the area inside the bar is dedicated to dancing, you can kind of call it a club. If most of the area inside the bar, inside the building is dedicated to drinking, it's a bar. Um, if it has a lot of couches and stuff, it's a lounge. So each one kind of has its own personality. Sure. And you can have bars that it really doesn't matter to mix, but other ones, uh, like the one I do a couple that, uh, come 11 o'clock, the lights get changed a different color chairs, get moved out of an area and that becomes a dance area. Like it was tables before and then they move it out and it becomes a dance and they want mixing and dancing. So it kind of depends on where you're at at that. So you have your clubs, your bars. You also have your restaurant bars, which I do a restaurant bar. It's a, uh, place here in the city. And, and when the kitchen closes, I start DJing. And they do have lights built into it, so it does the same atmosphere that rest of the time it's a normal restaurant, just plain, ordinary, everyday restaurant. And then at 11 o'clock when the kitchen closes, they have a bar over there. The bar's kept open. Lights change. Other lights come on. I start DJing. Hmm. And it's, it's you need, and it's something as simple as that, but they won't hire someone who doesn't mix. Sure. It's simple as that. Um, we can go on the full side. We've seen videos, if you've not never been to one, a giant uh, – like a music festival, a DJ festival where they have, you know, DJs after DJs on, on multiple stages, uh, a lot of electronic festivals, stuff like that. That's also one that for the most part, uh, I mean, I've seen some guys fake it. When I say fake it, I mean, they put in a, a mix CD or a mix and then pretend that they are mixing yeah. live when they're not. Um, so there's the festival side of things. There's also tours that if you want to get in, I used to do tours with some of the smaller ones to where there might be me and a couple of bands to where I was the opening act. And I had to, to do a, a thing that got the audience going. There's a couple of my friend, um, who is the Serato test guy that I got my Serato that I'm not supposed to talk about, that they showed pictures of it at NAM. So I'm going to, this Serato is real. Um, he, he does that where he'll be hired to go and open for acts. So there might be an act come to his town that is a singing act, a, a rap act or something. And his job is to open as an opening DJ. Mm -hmm. um, Mixmaster Mike, for those, I don't know if you know the name, Mixmaster Mike was always the Beastie Boys DJ. He is now touring as an opening act for, um, uh, crap, I just forgot the name of the band. Um, does the song Enter Sandman. Metallica. Um, Metallica. He is the opening act. Metallica's opening act is a DJ. Wow. So it can go as that far. And then you can go to stuff that like Kilma does, where it's underground house music, underground different styles of EDM, where that's obviously have to be mixed. So you have all these different areas that you could go and get a job in your off season or do it for fun or do it for extra money or whatever. You know, these are all things that you can do but you have to be able to mix like two or three of the places. It's one of the things that I had talked about before that two or three of the places that I work, I'm the person who coordinates the DJ schedule. Okay. So we have, they, they want DJs rotated in and out. So it's like, I'm there like once a month, three other DJs rotate in and out, in and out. So let's say it comes my turn to be on that month and I have another gig that maybe pays higher. Okay. Um, I'll take the higher gig and then I have to fill my spot or if somebody else said I can't be there that night, I have to fill their spot. 
I'm going to fill it with someone who can mix. I've had friends who, um, dear friends who, who DJ very, you know, for, 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 uh, different kind of events, mobile events. And they wanted to be, you know, like, well, I can fill in for you. And I'm like, you actually can't because you don't mix at all. So I have to hire, you know, someone who can mix to go in. So these are the kind of things that, that these, this is what I'm talking about, that these are the kind of things that if you want to do them, we're going to talk about what you need to get into them if you're interested. And like I said, it's great because it's, I look at it for extra money. Some, I have a lot of friends who are primarily wedding DJs. Yep. Okay. That means that's the, the quite and above and above, the bulk of their income comes from weddings. Okay. And then the wedding season kind of dies off and they fill in the rest of the year with little bar gigs because they can mix. And then when the wedding season comes on, they may have an early wedding that starts in the middle of the afternoon and it's done by like eight o'clock. Cause you, you know, every weddings can kind of shuffle. They're mostly in that one time slot, but you can have them shuffle around and they'll do double gigs to where they'll do the wedding and then pack up at the wedding and then go and hit a nighttime bar at 11 o'clock and make some extra money that way. So I do that a lot. I do. Uh, there's many nights. I have one coming up this month where I'm doing a school dance and then right after school dance going doing a bar. Hmm. So it's, it, it's just different ways to bring in money for you. And that's kind of the purpose that I want to talk about this, that if you are interested in this, I want to kind of help you along and kind of get you going. So does that kind of explain where I'm coming at before I get to the things? Yeah, no, that's, that, okay. that's good. Cool. All right. So equipment, equipment has changed. Cause I can honestly tell you five years ago, if you came into a club with a controller, you, you probably weren't going to get to DJ. I'm almost guaranteeing mm-hmm. you weren't just five years ago. Now you might, it all depends on how big it is. If, if the place I did one a few years ago that they have a, a the, the booth is big enough for two full setups. So you can come in, like I was hired as the opening DJ. So I would come in and set up my controller on the one side and the other side already had the turntables, like full out turntables that they do Serato with on the other. So I'd come in and do my opening DJ two hours later, hour and a half later, the main headliner comes in, uh, he jumps on his side, I shut off, and I go on about my business. A lot of times, I would do the headliner and then go somewhere else and make money that night, too. So the equipment that you used to have to have isn't as much, but still is quite prominent, okay? So to, to get more of them, okay, to get more um, of the gigs, you are probably going to have to be uh, proficient in two or three different types of hardware that's okay. the best way i could say that you need to be proficient with uh cdjs because that's one of the biggest thing that most of the people you'll see clubs now they're run cdjs or the new uh denon 5000 which is the, basically the same thing uh that's a media controller which is close to the cdj um you might have actual turntables where you need to have a serato box or the mixer itself that's between them has a serato box built in so all you do is take your usb cord out of your laptop into the mixer and then that mixer has the sound card that runs everything so those are the two that you're probably going to have to um you're going to have to be proficient on some level if you want to really take a farm not saying you can't you absolutely can get gigs without them you absolutely can but you're going to open yourself up to just gig after gig after gig that you wouldn't have had before that you have now because you have, you're able to do some of those other types of equipment. Sure. Okay. Um, it's just like, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I try to think of ways to explain it today. Um, you, you know, it, for, for those of us who are older, remember how many cars out there had a stick shift. And you think about, you know, if you have the ability to drive a stick shift and, the, you know, everybody, a lot of people can drive an automatic. Yeah. Um, but if you have the ability to drive a stick shift, uh, you can drive more vehicles. And that's kind of what this is. You're driving your income. So it gives you more opportunity to to work in some of the other areas. If, if that, like I said, again, back to if you want to choose, these are things you, you're going to have to kind of be proficient in that. Software. Um, here's where it kind of it kind of goes everywhere here. And this is the weird thing primarily in those mixing areas primarily you're going to use serato because the serato box is for those of you who don't know it's it's a converter box that converts the analog signal of the needle on the record into a digital signal that moves your 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 software that's called midi musical instrument digital interface 
So most of, but you don't have to, most of them are with an SL box, but virtual actually lets you plug into anything. So I can walk up to any Serato device, plug in, and it will run straight off of that. You have another side of the community, which is the electronic side of the community. They use Tractor a lot, and I mean a lot, but I've also found other DJs. I went and saw um, DJ Scribble at the expo this year, and he's a Tractor DJ. I didn't realize that. Hmm. So you don't necessarily have to have one type of software, but you prominently in those jobs, if you're going to be using other, you know, plugging your laptop into other people's equipment, you're probably going to have to have Serato on there or be really proficient. Like, like, you know, like I said, cause I can just throw a uh, virtual on anything. You kind of have to know what to do. So software can be anywhere, but it can limit you to um, music. This, this is something that, that I've, you've heard me talk about how I have so many different remixes yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And before the show tonight, I was playing John, some of my, some of the stuff I've done in the past. And, and it's like, I've totally forgotten that I've, I've done mixes and remixes of songs. Some of the stuff, you know, 20, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, I know about 30, but you know, more than 20, um, having the right songs for these venues too, because even, even the bar that I, I told you that little restaurant that I do on Fridays um, that, is a thing uh you really couldn't get away with playing the album cuts like the plain radio cuts you couldn't get it because people don't want to hear that when they go out to those places so you're gonna have to have a redrum or something nice or be able to mix really well to where you, you can really be creative with them i've seen some guys be really creative with just plain cuts um so having the right music is something and that takes some digging um, we did a show. How long ago did we did that show about where to find music? That's two years, a year oh, ago. Oh, goodness. It's been quite a while. Yeah. I may have to do another one because I've been on a look now for different places to get music from. And it's kind of neat to see all the different possibilities out there now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've talked about, and I, again, did a video on this, is about how streaming, I think, is going, me loving technology, how streaming is going to come into the future of DJing. Whether you think it is or not, whether it's whether it's the bottom baseline that you keep most of your songs on your hard drive in some sort of audio or video format, you're going to be tying in to a streaming service in the future. Easy as pie. Uh, one of the things that Apple talked about this year is they think they're going to drop all iTunes sales when it comes to individual songs. So if you want to hear them, you have to stream them through Apple Music. They, there's no longer going to be a purchase uh, of Apple in probably about two years, maybe 2019, I think they were talking. So think about if you're a person who's always, whether you're just a person who likes music and you've, you know, that's where you got your music, you won't be downloading music anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think in the DJ world, it's going to come to you and you kind of have to be prepared for it. I, I, I look at it as a backup, as an emergency, being able to grab songs that I don't have. I like to keep, to curate my own library. And I think as a DJ, that's really important. But if I'm out somewhere and somebody wants something and it's a song that would, I know that would be a hit or, you know, whether it be a private party or whatever, um, I'm going to that internet. I'm going to my Deezer typing it in and right there it is. And I'm playing a song, making someone happy of a song that I never would have had ever. Like it happened Saturday night. Perfect example. There is a new Latin dance hit right now called Dora. D-U-R-A, if I'm saying that right. It's Daddy Yankee and who's the other one? Yeah, um, I think I just saw it on the, uh, the Hot 100 when I pulled, yeah. when I pulled, um, put that together. I didn't yeah. have it. And just immediately, because there were two or three people there, they're like, oh, this. And they're showing me videos of people. I guess there's a dance to it. And pulled it up, dropped the song right there. And the whole place went, went you know, the, that whole side that knew the song went crazy. So that's a perfect example of being able to tie in and grab something when you need that. Um, and it's not just for, like I said, the private gig for somebody, you know, I'm out in public at a regular one, not something I'll always do, but I looked at that song, grabbed it and went, yeah, I'm going to play this. I like it. So yeah. that kind of gives you the opportunity. Um, like I said, remixes uh, are important. Redrums. We've talked about redrums and what they are. And I can explain that in the future. We can do another show about the music because I always say, I always do my three R's, uh, remixes, redrums and radio edits. And, and they give you your three things, a remix, a redrum, which is the radio edit with a drum beat underneath of it, maybe an intro and outro, and then the radio edit being a clean version of it. So you'll grab three versions every time. That's what I kind of look at the three R's when you're grabbing that. And the last part when it comes to music is something that there's a big divide. And John can attest to this because 
I found out that his kids are now making songs. And that is a normal part of DJs nowadays to where you're making your own remixes, your own songs, your own versions, your own everything. And in, you'll have guys that'll drop songs that you'll be like, that's so amazing. Where'd you get that? And they'll be like, I made it. That's yeah. mine. Just so that they have something that's so original. And that's something, again, that if you want to get into these, you don't have to, but it's going to give you more of a chance to get into these other gigs because people are going to hear the songs and they're going to like, I, I love his edits. We need to get him in here. I know guys that are average DJs, but have great programming skills when it comes to the edits that they choose and when they play them. And they get big gigs because of that. Oh, yeah. They can drive a crowd because they can mix mix well. I think they can mix well. I'm not saying they can't mix. They can mix well. You wouldn't put them up there with some kind of turntablist. But because of their extremely good editing skills of the songs and then the programming of when to put them, um, I watched a guy, uh, it was last year, uh, at a college night, drop in his remix. And he just did the chorus of... Um, Aretha Franklin respect. All right. So this crowd was dancing to stuff like Pitbull and just jamming. And he drops this in at the right time with the right remix. And the place went nuts singing it out loud oh, yeah. and screaming it. So there are th that's why I say the music can, can get that way and it can help you. Each thing of the, each one of these things is going to be a tool that kind of bumps you up a little bit and to get more of those gigs. If that's something that you're interested in. Um, the last thing on my list, and we can start asking questions and talking questions after that, is the flat out skills um, that you need. And, and they're just basic mixing skills. Uh, and it can be anything from just beat matching. Um, it can be scratching. It can be mixing. It can be anything. Um, but that is an absolute ne necessity from the beat matching because there's beat matching and then there's mixing. Mixing and beat matching are not the same thing. We, I, I'm going to do a lesson in the future about posting mixes so that um, when a song, like when, when we did the, uh, um, the uh, uh, edit show a couple weeks ago where we did the promo only quick edits. Remember the show we did with oh, the yeah. promo only quick edits? Yep, yep. How that as soon as that song, the vocals on that song ended, the vocals on the next song started. Yep, That's called posting. And there's a difference even between beat matching, posting, and mixing. So there are three different skill sets there that each, if you have each one, then that just puts you further and further into this stuff. And I, I think they're important. And, and this, is, this, is, this is why I, I do it. And I've actually had some guy who watched the show, that show, a couple weeks ago. We did the promo only stuff on. He said that he DJs a ice skating rink on Fridays, okay, Out, outdoors. So he said there's nights it's so cold he can't touch the, the platters. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't mix, but after that show, gave it a try because at ice skating rink, it's not as, you know, it's not like a dance floor you're going to lose, okay? Gave it a try and said, I had a lot of fun. He goes, they weren't very good, but I had a lot of fun. And that's one of the things about the mixing that I tell people. It just makes things fun. Yeah, it, I would agree. It, makes, it, it gets very boring. Yeah. It just, it's, these are our toys and play with your toy, mm -hmm. you know, have some fun with it. So the beat matching, the mixing, the, the uh, uh, phrasing or posting, depending on which word you want to call that, um, scratching effects, and then you get into like wordplay and, and stuff like that. And these are all skills that are absolutely, you know, a part of that other job uh, doing the mixing. So that kind of takes me through everything that you need. I want to be able to answer questions um, if you have one towards a specific area. Like you say, I'm interested in DJing underground stuff like Kilma does, or I'm interested in, in being an opening act for a band or something like that. And we're going to try to direct you in, in ways to help you. Um, so I hope that I, I can, if I don't have the answers, uh, I'm going to be honest and admit that I don't have the answers, but we'll try to work our way through it. So John, if they have any questions, um, I'll take the questions. We only have because we're we're done a little bit early tonight, yeah, right? We, gotta, we have another show. Yeah, we yeah. got another one, and then to switch over to like fifteen or twenty minutes tops. Yeah, they've just been kind of kind of uh, chatting and such. I haven't seen okay. seen too terribly much for questions. If any anyone uh, had some, you uh, have any questions? John? Well, and as I was going through, is is um, and we've talked about some of this before, so I, I apologize because it's going to be a repeat. But mainly that's for the audience and such. When you're talking about mixing at a show in mm -hmm. a given hour of the show, are you 
mixing and keeping the tempo close or compatible? Are you, uh, you'll mix maybe three songs and then maybe you'll have a uh, spot where you'll be going and jumping so far in tempo or genre so that that won't be quite a mix It'll, or it might be more of a, a slam type mix, what have you. How do you, how do you handle that tempo changes and such like that? Um, I actually had a good conversation. Uh, the guy that was on with me last week, DJ Cadillac, again, I apologize for not being able to show his videos because um, the guy is just amazing. But we talked about how some DJs plan their sets out. So every night they go out, they know what song they're going to play after what song. Mm -hmm. So like I said, my friend who does the programming, you can look on his set on his when he brings his thing up. He has a crate of songs and he will run through 10 songs that he knows mix well together and never variates off of them at all. So he will stick to that without ever it budging, no matter. I mean, I've literally seen people ask him requests and he'll go, OK, whatever. And, and or say, yeah, I'll get to it and have absolutely no intention on playing it because hmm. he's doing his set. You have that. You have the other side of Cadillac. And I like to talk about that to where we like to read the crowd. We really like to watch the crowd. So if I'm dropping stuff that it's at 80 BPM and the crowd's not feeling it. I'm going to do a test song because you're able to mix in and out of stuff, figure out a way to jump, whether it be through a couple of songs, increasing your, your BPM over a couple of songs to get faster, or there are transition mix out there, again, about having the right songs. Transition mixes are a song that is already pre-made where it starts at 80 BPM and finishes at like 110. So over this minute of this transition mix, it, it, it speeds up. So you'll sure. start it in at the 80 and by the end it's at 110, then you start your 110 song. Um, or you can just do effects and jump in and out of stuff. But I like him and I were talking about, like, we'd we like to read the crowd. So if I'm dropping something and, and they're digging that feel, that vibe, because that can be, BPM isn't everything. It's the feel. So you can have a song, a good example. The new song that's out right now, uh, Lemon was out by uh, Nerds, which is Pharrell and Rihanna is still like 100, what is it, 100 BPM? Um, it is 97 BPM, but the speed of this song is really kind of upbeat. I mean, if I can play a couple seconds without us getting busted on YouTube. <laughs> you, gotta, um, we'll have to, you have to talk over yeah. it to make sure yeah. then. So, so this, is, this is a good example of a 97 BPM song that's actually fast, but it's only 97 BPM. So it's got that... Da, da, da. The whole song is like that. Hmm, that's interesting. So you have and that's only ninety-seven. So we could pick another song in there with that same range, and then you ask about uh, above and below. I Cadillac and I were talking about this. I like to stay no more than eight percent above or below. That's just kind of the way I hunt. So if I'm doing a beat range and this is ninety-seven, I'll go like three or four each direction. So I'll do a search, and it's ninety-seven. I'm going to do a search for ninety four to 101 yep. and i look at all the songs i have 94 to 101 and kind of see what's there that's playable um believe it or not in that range sexual healing so think about those two songs where you have it's that yeah. and then all right and mm -hmm. those are the same bpm but they have two totally different feels sure so it's not always just about bpm it's kind of a feel so if i want to slow it down i'll pick a song like that that i know is the same bpm but has that slower sexy sort of feel and then i can jump into something slower easier in the same way in reverse i could throw lemon in there lemons poppy and grabby bobby and then jump up another 10 beats on another song somehow so it's for me it's a feeling it's looking at the crowd seeing how they're reacting um, and usually like Saturday night, I was having trouble getting that crowd because you, I would get a section of them and then a section of them and then a section of them. And finally I hit on some, uh, like early two thousands R and B ish sort of thing. And everybody jumped up and I'm like, I'm staying right here. I'm not leaving this feel. It's going to be a sexy R and B feel for the next hour. Sure. And it worked. Yeah. And it kept people there. The whole idea of our job at some of those places is to keep people there drinking. Yeah. Uh, so you know, that's, that's all part of it. So that's, that's my thing when it comes to mixing is I'll, I'll do a beat range in there, stay plus or minus um, 8%. And 8% would take that from a, 90, a song that's 97. Okay, 97 uh, plus 8% takes it to 89. 
and minus 8% takes it to, I mean, I'm sorry, minus 8% takes it to 89 and then plus is 104. And that would be absolute maximum. So sure. going from 97 to 104 or 97 to 89. That's, that's as abs. I mean, that's maximum for me, but I know other guys that go further. So I've seen guys that go further and do it well and make it sound well. So mm-hmm. you kind of, you kind of go with you. And I've just been so many years of DJing prior to the digital age where you can now take it above eight or 12% where before your pitch fader was a hardened thing that can't be changed, you know, didn't, didn't have the software. So I guess just my mindset over the years of kind of looking at that and that's, that's where I come from on that. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Jake had asked in a question a question about uh, payment as far as uh, DJing and a lounger bar. I would guess he's. I, I want to hit someone's question. I just rake. saw right there about double beat. You can oh, do that rake. too. So if you have a, a song that's dropping in at seventy, drop something oh, in. Oh, there we go. I understand. The double beat, and that's that's also another thing you can do. So yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the cool things about virtual, is that virtual will let you in in the tag editor. Uh, Mark it as both. So it will register as both if you want. So, hmm. All right. So what was the question you had? About uh, Jake paid? was asking oh, okay. a little bit about uh, uh, payment as far as DJing and lounges and such. Um, you're going to get paid that night. Um, a lot of the places now are doing, um, uh, what do you call it, invoicing. So uh, I'm out a couple nights a week, and there's several places that I have to, on Monday, invoice them. And then I show up on Friday or Saturday, and then they give me a check that has been made from the, the head office to the place and then they hand it to me and at mm. the end of the year they give me their 1099 and all that um other places i've done there's a couple college bars that at the end of the night you get handed cash and because the college kids are paying in fives and tens you'll get paid, paid a stack five. of fives and tens that's gonna be your pay for the night i'm not kidding you yeah. i've gotten stacks of fives going okay you know <laughs> so it can be either um you, you rarely have a contract that you sign with them uh, there's been a few here or there um, if you go out and do the festivals, you're going to have a contract. You'll know way ahead of time what's expected. You're going to have to have a rider, uh, ex- you know, saying what e- what hookups you need, how much space you need on the stage. You'll have to have all of that ahead of time. Um, same with doing an opening act for the band. You have to have the rider ahead of time saying, "I need this many, I need this electrical outlet within this many feet, this kind of uh, sound plug in. I need this much space right and left and forward and top and bottom." Um, but the bars and the clubs, usually you're just going to get paid that night, whether it be in check or in cash. So, you know, I could be off on a Friday and get a call to go somewhere to DJ and right then I'm going to get paid that night. I got to pick up a paycheck. And that's why I like the ability to, to, to mix because I can just fill in somewhere. Someone just say, hey, can you fill in for me? And I'm like, yes, I can. And I go and I just then make even if it's. I like to say on the smaller paying gigs, like some of the small college bars, I call it grocery money. Yeah. Because it's not a big paycheck, but it will pay your entire grocery bill, you know, for whatever you're that week or two weeks or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, I look at all that as it's great, you know, especially the way I eat. <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat, so I need that. And that's one of the things that I joke around about that you can tell when I've done a private party because I must look desperate or I must look like a bachelor because every private party I do, they send me home with food. <laughs> so you can look in my refrigerator and if you see catered food, like, you know, rigatoni and all that chicken, I have DJed a private gig. Man, man. And there was one, two, three years ago, I did a, um, a graduation party and the lady's like, can you stay another hour? How much would it cost? And I looked over, I said, send me home with food and I'll stay another hour. No problem. She's like, you got it. And they sent me home with, for me as a bachelor, I now had good cooked food. So I was very happy with that. That made me happy. So that is, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Jimmy's saying it's lagging a little bit. He must have a, his connection must be down yeah. or, or weak. Round pots, not sliders. Yes. Pots. The round ones are called pots. Well, in the, in the, not everybody calls them pots, but that's the, if you're in the business, Ben would call them pots. So if Ben Stowe calls them something. That's what everybody's going to call them. Um, uh, it's got messages that are popping in and such for the. I'm, I'm looking to think too, see if we have any here. Um, I also again while we're, while we're kind of lagging here, um, if you have topics you want me to do, I have a list of stuff that I want to do with virtual, and as soon as I'm able to do Serato, they'll let me because like they showed Serato, the new Serato at Nam, so there's pictures of it out there. Um, I'll do a thing on basic Serato stuff. Um. So if you have topics that you want me to cover, let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm 
we're going to mix them up between things like tonight where we're talking conceptual ideas. We're going to do nights where I'm showing mixing things because I have, like we did last week, the, the, the eight beat in, eight beat out. I'm going to talk about stuff. I have shows and I'm going to talk about how to use effects and, and how somebody in the, in the chat room said something about a baby scratch. I'm going to show you how to use a baby scratch and how to practice a baby scratch. Um, and then other shows, it's going to be, you know, about software. So it, it, there's going to be, we're going to mix it up as much as we can. So if you have a topic, you want me, see me do a question, throw it at me. I'll add it to my list and we'll maybe put some stuff together one night in a, in a thing. Which I definitely want to do a show where I introduce everyone to both CDJs and turntables so that you kind of see them. Uh, DJ Cadillac said that he would help me out with that. So we're going to go down his compound. He has this incredible room. Because oh, nice. he, he, he has... I'm telling you, he, he, like I said, he competed last year, 2017. He was fifth in regional DMC. So it's an incredible DJ that can place fifth in a DMC competition. But he also does these weddings to where he'll come in. I'm not kidding you, with, with a 6,000, the Dennis 6,000, like I have, mm -hmm. where he's not doing the mixing in that sense of scratching and stuff and come in with it as part of a rack and then 20 other computers that run lights and, and projections and and it looks like a nasa uh, uh you know switchboard with all his stuff <laughs> and it really it is there, uh, we joke his new year's eve seriously would make nasa envious with what he with his setup lighting and stuff um Funny. so we're uh going to do a thing and let him because he has spent his whole life on turntables explain to you um how to hook them up what each one is why he does it um, benefits and and different things to that if you choose to go that route. Um, somebody and, asking there about yeah we got a question on the Facebook actually. Okay, Facebook. Hi, Facebook. Yeah, Ronald uh, has a question on how to improve uh, his blending skills, his blend skills. For me, blending is an ear thing because you are. For those of you who know what blending is, blending is you're taking the the mids, lows, and highs on the mixer. And I'm going to switch cameras here real quick so I can kind of point it out. And switchy, switchy. So your, your mid lows and highs are right here, okay? So if I'm coming into this song over here, I would have the bass down, all right, so that when you're hearing it, you're primarily hearing this song's bass. Mm -hmm. Then I'll bring it in, and we're taking it, instead of being a hard cut or a slam, the, per the purpose of the blend is to take it from one to the other, and I used to have this guy when I used to DJ uh, a trance night. Uh, he was my light tech, and he would always go butter. I'd hear him go butter, and that means that I've, I've blended them together as smooth as, as butter. Smooth as butter, okay. Oh. Can't tell where one begins and the other one ends. Wouldn't he have put it more of a butter? You know, more than more of the East Coast accent to that. He might have. I don't know. He. It was funny because soon as soon as the club was done at two a.m., he's like, "I gotta go. I gotta catch my bus." Because he took the bus to work to to the club sure that's how he had to get back and forth so he had to jump and jump on the bus so he you know was the last bus out at 2 a.m to get home um but you would blend across so at some point you know you would take them and you would twist them back to where now this is the primary one and i like to call it front and back so as it's this way this one's down and this one's up this one would kind of be the prominent one up front right. and with your ear you would kind of bring them across that way to where now this one's up front but then you can start twisting in the old days instead of a, a phaser that you would have effect you would opposite turn the highs and lows each direction to do a phase effect so you could do a thing where you take the phase effect and now this one's turning down so your phase effect halfway through i would do a turn down halfway through continue turning that down and then start bringing this one back so it, it would go from there to forward and back, and that would be the blend and out where it kind of gives it that and, and then blends out smoothly. So to get proficient at that is to know your songs. And I always think this is one of the biggest things when it comes to DJing is knowing where your songs jump in and out. And if they have points in there where there's an aggressive beat or no beat, you can use them to make that blend smoother to where if you have one song that hits hard and another song that doesn't hit hard towards the ends, ends and beginning, you can mix them together to be a medium. So you have a hard and a soft could be a medium. And there might be a point where there's in that song, a symbol up. And that way you can bring the other one out through again, below the highs and lows. I'm not going to switch the camera back. There is a high low filter. You can take the high low filter and twist that out to where you're taking the bass out of it and make it a little bit higher to then mit to match the one you're coming into that doesn't have bass. So instead of having bass, you, instead of slamming out of the bass into no bass, you take the high-low filter, bring it out a little bit to make that smooth transition from a bass to no bass into the next song. So that's kind of the best way to do it is to know your songs, know where stuff's coming in and out. Um, 
and, and kind of stuff like that. Does that kind of explain it? Yeah, yeah, and you'll be able to demonstrate that in the next show at 11 o'clock. Yeah. And that'll be, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of things there. Um, the one that said about headphones, this is an attachment. Somebody asked me before. I can't remember the name of it. I did send it to somebody. You just go on Amazon. I think it's called Mic something, and it's all it does is it, it magnets on, and that's all it is, and I just use it here in the studio. I do not use a, a headphone mic when I'm mixing at all. I use an actual mic, um, depending on what it is. If it's a night... Because a lot of like the the one that I was at last Saturday, they absolutely do not want you talking on the mic. There is no mics allowed. They do not want you talking. Your job is to mix and keep people dancing. Do not say a word. They will not allow. And there's been several clubs in my life where they do not. Other ones they want you to engage with the crowd, or other ones they go, huh, just tell about our beer special. Yeah. And they don't care. So you you then have to like you know pick people out and say happy birthday just to kind of engage the crowd. Um, but I, I, most of the time, most of the time it's like this, where this one's always attached underneath here, just a little attached mic and it's always attached. So if I needed to say something, I would pull it out, drop it in and go from there. And that would be kind of it. Or the person with license plate number seven, one. If you have a blue Buick, you're about to be towed. I don't remember my license plate number. Dang it. Um, if, uh, um, if you, if the person who asked about this, if you send me a, a Facebook message, I'll send you the link. Cause somebody had already asked me about it and I sent them to them, but it's just a little add on, um, on that. Con- uh, uh, Jared is wondering about, you have a GoPro in front of you there. Yes, it is. It actually, it's a fake GoPro. What is, is my friend Willie calls them no pros because it's, <laughs> it's a non, he calls it my no pro. And if you go on to like eBay, uh, you can look up SJ Cam is one of the companies, and there's a zillion ones that have different names. And I paid $17 for this. That's all it is. And just put a regular USB out of it and down into the computer. And then it came with this bracket that has a normal quarter inch screw, like every camera stand you've ever seen in your life has. You pop the camera in there, and then this is a bracket stand right here that then goes down and goes underneath my laptop. So it sets there. And that's how I can get the over top. And this this was like a twelve dollar thing, and then seventeen dollars for the camera, and and I have an overhead view that I'm able to to do this with. And that's that's all there is to it. Whoops, wrong camera. Too many cameras. Yeah, that other one was uh, <laughs> the one on the laptop. But it, that's all it is because I use it because I can keep it so close. Yeah. But yet get every you know everything on here, you know. Okay. Continue on. With the I know I talk fast. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, the other one starts at 11. We're after um, Jeremy and Dave's show. Um, tune into theirs. Check theirs out. They got some great stuff. I really like their their professional level. And Jeremy, if you ever see him out anywhere, the the guy dresses so fly. It's not even funny. I wish I could look that good. I really do. <laughs> I love the way he dresses. Yeah, um, they, they, they both they both do do very well. But yeah. Jeremy's just you know he. He can go, he'll be wrestling with lights, setting up his room at one of the conventions, and he still looks like a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some of us, if we just go over there and we, you know, help help pull an extension cord for like 10 seconds or a sweaty mess and we have to go. Yeah. But, yeah. Some, not that I'm jealous or anything. No, 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 no. Uh, well, we should wrap up. So, speaking of, of the guys, yeah, we're almost at 10 too. So, we'll. Uh, what were we saying next week? You said next week we're going to have to do, what was it? Blending. Was that it? No, no, no. Next, next week you're going to grab one of the virtual DJ topics. Okay, I was trying to figure out which because you had mentioned it one there. Oh, I'm like, yeah, that'll be perfect. No, there's, you had quite a few. You had a quite a few. Yeah. Quite a few. So few we'll, we'll do a virtual next week, and and I will be able since somebody already posted like at Nam, they had um, the new Serato up running, so people were taking pictures of the screen. So I'll bring those out and show them to you and show you what they've had with those. If you're a Serato user, you can see it, and I can tell you a little bit from only the, the, to the level of what they showed at NAM. So now that we can talk about it and, and confirm that it's real and it's happening. It's so real. We will do some sort of thing uh, for virtual next week. I have a lot of really cool stuff. We can do effects. We can do uh, how to do a live broadcast, how to record yourself, different things like that. There's a lot of things within there that um, Serato just, well, not Serato, but Pioneer just put out 
an app to record yourself and we'll show you how that you can record yourself and, and see how you sound with the computer and stuff like that. And I know guys that do radio shows. I actually talked with a guy a couple weeks ago that does his own radio show and does it with a, a, a controller like this and a mic and records himself live. And then it goes to the radio station and gets broadcast. Yeah. And, I, I, and I, I, virtual and, and just what you have here. That's another thing. If you want to be a radio disc jockey and you have the hookups, that you already have what you need if you wanted to go that way. And that's one one I definitely want to dig into, so that'd be fun. All right, MJ, we'll see you again in about an hour somewhere in that ballpark. Come join me. Have your equipment set up if you want to scratch or if you have any questions. If you have a new piece of equipment you just want to show off, it doesn't matter. We're just going to have a hangout and just talk about anything and everything and have fun. And if you are not signed up, go to djntvinsider.com. There you can sign up for the free level. That will get you the email. And I'll once I get Jeremy and Dave, I'm going to head to the house and tuck my kids in. And then I'll email the link out to everyone who is signed up on the Insider page there. So that'll be in a little bit. So, uh, MJ, we will see you in a little over an hour. Thanks, guys. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in a bit.